Hey, 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 what it do, what it do. This is your boy once again, KQKC Boxing Network. This is another edition of Boxing Updates. And we're going all the way. <laughs> we're going all the way to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, baby. The brother they love. And we're talking about none other than, you guessed it, Jerome Boots Ennis, who will be fighting this weekend right in the state of Nevada and Las Vegas. He will be taking on none other than Thomas Delorme. And, of course, Delorme believes that he is pretty much uh, 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 overhyped. Thomas Delorme, he didn't dismiss Jerron Ennis' obvious abilities, but he believes that he is uh, pretty much making a big deal. We are making a big deal out of what he uh, possesses. Now, the veteran welterweight contender simply pointed out that the gifted Philadelphia fighter who had established himself against proven opponents before Delorme will believe that Ennis is the future of their division. Now, Delorme considered himself to be the best opponent of Ennis' career and promised to test Ennis in a 10-round bout right here tomorrow night on Showtime. That's right. And when I say right here, that means yours truly will call this fight. Yes, I will. I stated in the last video that someone had approached me a bigger platform for me to call fights. But I don't have a say so in it. So therefore, when you can't control your own words or whatever, then what you do? You keep doing what you're doing, baby. Keep it pushing. Keep it moving, baby. Yes, sir. And shout out to the LDBC for allowing me the opportunity. So, now, let me uh, 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 keep going. Now, what I mean, allow me the opportunity, I'm saying that uh, uh, um, they accepted me as a member and allow me to be me. That's what I'm talking about. Now, Let's get into the video a little more deeper, okay? Now, uh, 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 of course, Delorme believes that he's going to get him a test because he believes that he is one of the top or only the top opponent that no other than Boots Innocent has faced thus far. And that's going to be right here, uh, right there on Showtime, okay? Showtime at the Manly Bay. And that's at the Maryland Bay Mikelo <laughs> Ultra Arena. All right. Now, everybody's pushing for him. And he is a great fighter, Dylan May said. Now, he told this to BoxingScene.com. But they're making him into something bigger than he really is. Now, are we doing that? Or are we just saying the obvious? I mean... You have to admit, he was in training camp with Sean Porter. Getting Sean Porter ready, and he was getting uh, 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 Ennis ready. And Ennis showed up, and he really showed out. He gave Sean Porter that work. Oh, man, he gave Sean Porter that work. And plus, he is confident in his skills. He called out the top 147 pounders. And I'm talking about top fighters like Spence we talking about Crawford and Porter I mean all of them and you guys yes he did call out the top three all right yes the top three he called out how many fighters are doing that today now except for Devin Haney which they all running and scattering like roaches that means they don't want to fight all right? That means they don't want to look bad. They'd rather hold on to the belt and take a picture of it on their damn bed or some shit. Besides getting in there, doing their job, doing what they do best, working on their craft, and getting in there and fight. Win, lose, or draw. 
You are a man. You have a job to do. And your job is to fight. Your job is to have a combat sport in, in your resume. And that resume must say that you are a champion, but look who you fight. That's why a lot of people don't look at resumes. Because resumes can be deceiving. All right? Deceiving. Now, of course, as I mentioned, Everybody pushing for this fighter, and he believes that uh, 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 he's bigger. He's not bigger than everybody realized. Now, because he has fast, absolutely uh, face. I'm sorry, absolutely nobody in the division. I'm going to push him, and we're going to see if he can swim. Wow! All right. So, Delorme is going to push Boost Anderson and see can he swim. Uh, uh, swim. Now, I would love and I welcome that. One thing about it, I can say about Knockout Box 86 TV, I'm right with him. This is a combat sport. This is boxing. And with boxing, come along uh, sometimes shit talking and pretty much let's get it on. Let the best man win. And right now, uh, Delorme is talking. Innocent is talking. And then when come Saturday night, all the talking is over with. Come tomorrow night, one hand will be raised and one will not. Now, I don't think it will be a draw. I think it will be a unanimous, not a split, but a unanimous decision. And I believe that Boost Innocent will prevail. Now, he does have a great ring IQ. And he will put that to the test on none other than the Lord May. So, as I keep going, all right, as I keep going, the 31-year-old DeLorme. Now, DeLorme is 31. That's not that old in the sport of boxing. But he is 25 and 5. He has been in there with the best. Now, he has lost back-to-back -back fights lately. The 12-round unanimous decision to WBA World Wonderway Champion, Jamal James and emerging contender uh, Stannis. Those are two top fighters. We're talking about Jamal James who's headlining the same card he's fighting on. Wow. Yes, he has fought the best of the best at the WBA standard, baby. All right. Now, also, as I continue. Now, of course, like I said, uh, uh, in Metis Stannis, who is 13 and 0 with nine KOs and won no contest, the Lord made tested Stannis, though, which enabled the native Puerto Rican to have his fight when it is rescheduled. All right. Now, of course, Ennis, he's 27 and 0, undefeated. With 25 KOs. That's very, very impressive. With one no contest. And what I mean that's very, very impressive. We're talking about Boo Innocent. 27 and 0. Undefeated. Undefeated. Now, of course, if you do some digging and look at the resume, then some people will say, well, okay, well, he's supposed to want that one. Uh, he should have blew this one out. And, you know, see, resumes can be kind of funny. It can be kind of tricky. Why? Because that old, that old, that old box is saying, styles make fights. That's why some opponents you blow right through. Some opponents you make it through. Do you hear what I'm saying, people? Do you comprehend what the OG is saying? See, style makes fights. And you both blow through or have a difficult to go through. But at the end, at the end of the day, you should prevail. Now, of course, as I move on, the 24-year-old uh, Ennis returned to the ring April uh, uh, um, the 10th. When he dominated former IBF junior welterweight champion Sergey Lipinets. Now we all remember Sergey Lipinets. 
He had a fight with uh, Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia prevailed over him with the overhand rights because Lippinette has a habit that when he throws, he leans over, leans over now to his left. And, of course, that sets up the right hand. And that what Mikey counted on. Uh, and Mikey uh, pretty much cornered him. Now, of course, I'm going to keep on going. Now, what happened with that fight with Lippinette? Um, um, Ennis, Gerard Ennis, he pretty much dropped Lippinette twice. Once in the fourth round and again in the sixth round. Round, the referee Arthur McCanty Jr. immediately waved a in to they scheduled the twelve round bout as soon as Ennis vicious left uppercut, not Lippinette's flat on his face. Now, of course, the Lorme once wasn't overly impressed with. Ennis. Now, uh, of course, uh, uh, against Lebanette. 16 and 2. And also with 12 kills. Because Ennis stays such a considerable size advantage. Yes, he does. But, once again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about size. It doesn't matter. Because as Floyd Mayweather in Baltimore. Now, of course, it doesn't happen. But sometimes it do. But as I get ready to close. Now, Ennis is a good fighter, the Lomay says. You can see he has a lot of talent. And he showed it in that fight. Against a fighter, Lippinets, who belongs in another arena. Now, of course, you got Delorme shitting on people. I'm not on uh, Delorme, I'm sorry. You got fight uh, uh, writers and fans that shitting on Jamal James. Jamal James did the right thing. He stayed clean. He fought. And yes, he has the opportunity to fight for a championship. Now, of course, I'm not going to sit here and analyze every little thing. But I do have Bruce Anderson winning this fight. I do have him winning this fight uh, come Saturday uh, night. I believe he'll be very dominant. And he'll be able to... uh, 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 hit James. Now, of course, he has a reach disadvantage, but that doesn't mean a damn thing. Because, see, one thing about it is that there is more, more that is in his toolbox. So, therefore, we're going to see. We're going to see. Delorme and Jerron Innocent into a contested welterweight fight. So, there you go. And keep in mind that Jamal James is a Minnesota Knight. That's right, he's from Minnesota. Minneapolis, to be exact. And of course, Bruce Innocent is from None other than the brotherly love state. We ain't talking about. We're talking about Philadelphia, baby. Yes, some best fighters came out of Philly. So, with that said, that's all I have for you right now. We will elaborate. We will go over this today, the lunchtime, on my show. And also... That would be 12 uh, how many? But let me tell you this. I come on Monday to Friday, 12.30 p.m. Central Time. Tuesdays, I am off. 
I come on Saturday mornings at 10.30 a.m. I would love for you to join me tomorrow. I'm going to put out some questions tomorrow. And I want to see your boxing mind answer those questions. As I open the phone lines up, I need for you to come in and answer these questions. Asking how many number of fights are you expected Jerron Boots Anderson would take to be champion. So, with that, that's all I have. All right? That's all I have. And, yes, I will call this fight between Delore May and, yes, also Boots Anderson. I will call the fight against Jamal James. And, yes, Boutaviz, I will call that fight. Hell, I'm going to call the whole card. Because what I do is double duty. What I do is I worked hard. Yes, I worked seven days a week, and now I knocked it down to six. And, yes, they are showing their love. And you are showing your love. I love every last one of you all in my chat. I love all my subscribers, and I will, I will, I will treat everyone equally. There's no bias here, and I expect you not to have one either. We must set an example. We must set an example for our network, our network, visitors that come to our network. We don't fall in there to over here at KKC. Over here at KQKC, I'm sorry. So, with that said, that's all I have for you. And you know what? I'm going to move on to the next one. So, with that, I greet you with the ancient earth with peace. And once again, this has been another, another boxing updates. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be on to you. And with that, I am out of here and on to the next one. Peace.